they follow it right up to this very moment. They are not going to let their ancestors down. The method of rulership through fear is tried and true. The Kundalini, the power of life, as it is known in Asia, it's one of the forces of nature. And it's viewed as a female energy that lays dormant or asleep at the base of the spine. And through a special practice of what they refer to as Kundalini Yoga, this female energy, symbolized as a nega or a serpent, can be awakened, you see. And it generates that power within the human being, or within the male of the species, that is necessary for spiritual development, which is known as union with God. The slave master, using fear, stole the African Americans' natural female energy. He is now un unable to express himself spiritually, symbolized here by the genie, the conqueror, because he cannot awaken his spiritual energy within himself and achieve that union with God. Once the Kundalini is awakened, awakened it's considered to be the highest spiritual advancement, symbolized here by the genie or genius, who can awaken his own Kundalini power. The fear of death. This is the book the master gave the slave. Death put limitations on you. You set patterns in your life. At 40 years old, I'll do this. At 60 years old, I'll do that. And then I'll die. You limit your life. You limit your achievement by the belief in death. And they show you that only the Christ comes back from the death. This is what they gave to the slave. A belief in limitations on the mind. He was taught that Christ died for his sins. The African-American has been tricked into believing that he can commit any crime, murder included, and that if he only asks the Lord for forgiveness, he will automatically be forgiven. Let me give you the real truth. The Lord heareth not the prayers of the wicked. The Lord heareth not the prayers of the wicked. There is no man living or that ever lived who can violate the laws of nature with impunity. It's only your deeds that save you. Your good deeds must equal your bad deeds. You reap what you sow. You pay for what you do. You pay, not Jesus Christ. Nobody can pay for your sins but you. Here, in this picture, the pen reinforces that belief that you can do what you want, this church scene, and be forgiven. Here, the stone speaks of the same testimony. The stone and the pen testifying to that same truth, the belief that you can get away with all your wickedness in the church. You got to reap what you sow. Here, that same wicked teaching in this, what they call a contraband, contraband meeting. It's contraband because there's no white people there teaching you the same thing. Go out and commit any crime. Go ahead and do it. You'll be forgiven. And here it is in stone, speaking loud. The pen and the stone. Yea, the pen and the stone shall bear witness. A thousands and thousands of years ago, teaching that same teaching. Here's how the black man learned of the Bible. With the white presence in the church, the white family, the white father, making sure that he got every lie correct, generating that image of love and compassion for black people on Sunday. But on Monday morning, they would turn around and get your children in school and teach them the science of being underachievers. They wrote all the books in order to guarantee your children's miseducation. They were taught to idolize European intelligence and education, and that they come from an uncultured, primitive people. They would make images of themselves, uh, of loving kindness, symbols, and art. And then when the children came out on the street, that same fear became real. The reality came home. This man, on one hand, loved them, on the other hand, he hung their families and beat their babies and terrorized their mothers. This is how confusion, disagreement, and arguments became a natural part of the African-American culture. This was the science that was put on him from the slave master. Then they took their little babies and little girls and put them to work. Little girls and boys under 10 years of age are sent to chain gangs according to what they say they did. Hard work and low wages.
the African American went to work for America in the building of America, as we see here, as the stone speaks from this city buried in the jungle in Southeast Asia. He went to work and he did everything he could, which is shown here in stone by his juggling, doing whatever he can, catch as catch can. This is the history. His first big job was fighting for the slave master. He got the highest pay and he got great respect and he got a gun. The slave master pointing, kill the enemy, the Vietnamese, the Korean, the Japanese, in the city of Stone in Southeast Asia, we see the identical response. American history gives its applause to this Stone City. This Stone City did it first. They wrote it in stone. And it speaks from the pen and from the rock. Get your enemy sickle like a dog. He got his jobs working on the railroad as a servant which is his number two position, as we see here in stone. He served in all the kitchens, all the hotels, on the trains, and he shined their shoes, which the gods of Southeast Asia knew before it happened. Oh yeah, his third job, which he is most famous for, he's a musician. He can dance, his woman can dance, and sing. Music became their industry, as we see here from the rock. And the rock hollers loud, Mr. Bojangles, there it is in stone from Southeast Asia in the city buried in the jungle. Oh, and they had those New Orleans marching bands, too, that the Africans of Asia knew about in advance. They showed them with their marching bands and their horns and their djembe, African drum, to show what people it was. And, of course, the African talking drum speaks for itself from the rock in a city buried in the jungle for thousands and thousands of years. Oh, they told him, hey, you want a white woman. Then they told him, you look and you come from the gorilla. What effect did it have when little black girls were depicted as, as ugly at every turn with picking any hair? When they came out with motion pictures and they depicted whiteness as beauty. But in one popular movie, they made it real clear. They said, if you're white, you're all right. If you're brown, you can stick around. But if you're black, homeboy, get back. They not only delivered this message with images, but they, just, they delivered the message with words, showing you and telling you what beauty was. Ain't he handsome? Lonzo Tucker, ain't he handsome? They intentionally divided the various shades of black people against each other, and they took it to the top of your head, right to your hair. In the movies, one of y'all got good hair, the other one got nappy hair, and y'all sit up there like fools arguing with each other. Mm, mm, mm. Every time you saw a movie, a black was a slave, a nanny, or he was picking cotton, looking stupid. That was the image that was given to all little children. The black female was taking care of the white woman's baby. What effect did this have when you saw your father? Every, at every turn carrying a bucket and a mop. This was the images that was put before your babies. What effect did this have on the mind? According to the laws of cause and effect, the signs were up all over the country. No colored hair, no niggas and dogs hair. Don't drink at this water fountain. Don't walk in this doorway. Don't eat at this lunch counter. Don't wash your clothes here. Don't do nothing white because you are not worthy of standing next or being near the white ones. You're nothing. You're black and you're ugly. What effect did this have on the minds of your babies? When they first learned how to read and they saw this, what effect did they have? The European knew what to do. He knew how to destroy the mind and make a slave because the mind tells the eyes and the ear. And the black man suffered because of the science and so did the black woman. They went through physical and mental anguish all the days of their life. This is America. That's why they say the black man and woman of America was crucified. The stone speaks. The stone will tell you loud and clear if you can read the handwriting of the gods. They crucified the black man and woman of America in every way, externally and internally. And they used the science. Oh yeah, they 
focus, or your own people sold you into slavery. They focus on that. 